Hi everybody. So now let's talk about a slight variation of the axiom of induction called the, I guess, the axiom of strong induction. Um, as we'll see, there really isn't any difference between the axiom of strong induction and the axiom of induction. They're equivalent. But um, the axiom of strong induction seems more powerful. And so it can make some proofs easier because um, as it's expressed, it seems to have more kick to it than the regular old axiom of induction. So let's compare the two. The standard axiom of induction, which I've re reproduced here, says that if you have an infinite family of statements indexed by the natural numbers, and if the first of those statements is true, and if the infinite family of implications, p of n implies p of n plus 1 is true for all n, then p of n is true for all n. And we've seen a couple of ways in which you can use this to prove infinite families of statements. In strong induction, the hypotheses are almost the same, but not quite. We assume for all n in the natural numbers that we have a statement, just like before. And we assume that the first one is true. But instead of assuming the implication that the first, the, the p of n statement implies the next one, p of n plus 1, we assume that if you know all of the earlier statements, p of 1 and p of 2 and p of 3 and so forth up to p of n are all true, then you can conclude p of n plus 1. If all of those implications are true, then the strong induction principle says that p of n is true. So you see, strong induction says that um, you need to know all of the, tr the truth of all of the preceding statements in order to conclude the truth of the next one. And um, sometimes that turns out to be quite helpful in, in practical cases. So let's look at an example. Uh, this is similar to the example on page 187 in the book. I've changed it slightly just to use slightly different numbers. So the proposition that we're interested in is any score of 12 or higher in a football game where the scores are either three points from a field goal or seven points from a touchdown is possible. So, I mean, by this I mean you can't get four as a score in a football game because you can't get a certain number of combinations of threes and sevens that's going to give you four. And if you think about it a bit, you can't get 11 um, because there's no way to take a positive combinations of threes and sevens and end up with 11. But you can get 12. 12, as the example here says, 12 is possible by getting four three-point field goals. And 13 is possible by getting two three-point field goals for six plus a seven-point touchdown. And 14 is possible by two touchdowns and it turns out that once, once you get past that, all the other numbers are achievable one way or another through a combination of field goals and touchdowns. And this is the result that we want to prove. And it's a natural thing to prove by induction, although, as we'll see, there's a slight complication, which is where strong induction is going to come uh, to our rescue. So um, what is the strong induction hypothesis? The strong induction hypothesis, well, maybe we should start out by noting that p of 12, p of 13, and p of 14 are all true. We just checked that. So rather than trying to, I mean, if we were doing the regular induction hypothesis, we would try to show that p of 14 implies p of 15. But this doesn't work so well because if we knew how to get 14 points, it's two touchdowns. And that, that doesn't tell us easily how to get 15 points, right? I mean, the way you get 15 points is with five field goals, five three points. And so the step from 14 to 15 isn't apparent. In fact, if all you knew was you could get 14, you, you can't figure out how to get 15 points. You need more information. So instead, we use the strong induction hypothesis in which we assume that we know that we can get all of the numbers starting at 12 up to n are true. So we assume all of p of 12, p of 13, p of 14, all the way up to p of n. 
and we start being interested at n bigger than or equal to 15. So we know p of 12, we know p of 13, we know p of 14. Now n is bigger than or equal to 15. And we want to show that if we know all of these are true, then we can get p of n plus 1. And here's where the trick comes from. The trick is that um, since we, we, we want to know that p of n plus 1 is true. But since p of 12, p of n are all true, we know that p of n minus 2 is true. In other words, we know how to get n minus 2. And if we know how to get n minus 2 and we want to get n plus 1, it's clear how to get n plus 1. You just add three points. That's a field goal. So um, since n minus 2 is a possible score, so is n minus 2 plus 3, which is n plus 1. So we have proved that if we know all of the preceding ones, that implies p of n plus 1. Although in practice, we really only needed to know the one that's 2 back. And if you want to think about it, this gives you kind of an algorithm for doing it. So remember, I, I said we might want to know how to get 15. Well, for 15, we should look at 12. We should go back 3. Uh, 12 was four field goals. So 15 is one more field goal. What about 16? Well, for 16, we go back 3 to 13, which we know is a, is a touchdown and two field goals. And so 16 is a touchdown and three field goals. And then what about 17? Well, for 17, we go back to 14. And 14 is two touchdowns. And so 17 is two touchdowns plus a field goal. And so on. And in this way, you can figure out how to get all of the scores bigger than 12. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, strong induction is really the same, equivalent to, not the same as, but equivalent to regular induction. That is to say, hmm, why won't this slide? Here we go. That is to say, if you know strong induction, um, then and to, 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 to prove the, the result using strong induction, you can actually change strong induction into regular induction. Um, I don't think this is done in the book, but for the sake of mathematical completeness, let's walk through it. So let's suppose that we have the hypothesis of strong induction. So we have a sequence of statements that satisfy the conditions of strong induction. P of 1 is true, and P of n plus 1 follows from all of the preceding ones. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this strong induction into a regular induction by changing the statements. I'm going to let s of 1 be p of 1. And then my new statements are going to be the ands of all of the earlier statements. So s of 2 is p of 1 and p of 2. s of 3 is p of 1 and p of 2 and p of 3, and so on. So we have a sequence of statements, and s of 1 is true. And what the strong induction hypothesis says is that s of n, which is this big and of all the preceding statements, implies p of n plus 1, which is our next statement. But remember what s of n plus 1 is. s of n plus 1 is s of n and p of n plus 1. So if s of n is true and p of n plus 1 is true, so is s of n plus 1. So in fact, from the, from the definitions and the implication s of n implies p of n plus 1, we, from this, we get that s of n 
implies s of n plus 1. So now we've shown that s of 1 is true and s of n implies s of n plus 1 for all natural numbers n. This is the situation for regular induction, and it tells us that s of n is true for all n. But now, if s of n is true for all n, remember what s of n is. It's p of 1 and p of 2 and so forth and p of n. So if this is true, remember an and can only be true if all of the statements that make it up are true. So all of these statements must be true, including p of n. So all the p of n are true. So strong induction is a kind of a rearrangement of the axiom of induction. And we'll, besides this earlier example where in order to, with the uh, scores in the football game, where in order to make the induction work, you had to go back three steps, not just to the preceding step. And strong induction is convenient for that. We'll, um, in another video, look at a few more examples where being able to re reduce a problem into smaller problems, not necessarily the immediately preceding one, but just ones which occur earlier and have already been solved, and then deduce the truth of the big problem by the truth of the smaller problems, that turns out to be very useful. And that's where strong induction uh, comes into play.